Okay, today, guys, I'm going to show you a problem on this Cavalier that after you go and start it, after everything uh, comes on for the lamp test and it starts to settle down, uh, what will happen is after a few moments that the uh, battery light will come on over here on this right hand side, which is an indication of a charging problem, as you can see right there. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking into what can cause that particular kind of problem. So let me get this guy up on ramps and we'll go check it out. All right, guys, this is the alternator located right here. It's in a very obscure location on this particular model. So we have to remove some, some equipment to get access to it so we can swap it out. And I'm going to start that by coming over here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the negative battery terminal. And then I'm going to work my way back over to the other side. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up this spring clamp right here. Because what we're going to end up doing is removing this piece of the, the air intake area. Next thing I'm going to do is take off this little clip here using a trim removal tool. You might be able to do it with a flathead too. It's just a little push pin. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back this clamp here so that we can remove this air hose. Now, help if I set it on the right size, there we go. And then just to loosen it up, I'm gonna use this other tool. It's just a, another pair of pliers that has a plastic nylon line set of teeth so it doesn't tear up the rubber, just to give it a twist to loosen it up. And then before we can actually pull this guy off, we need to remove this vacuum connection and this electrical sensor connection. And then there's just one more thing to remove. There's another eight millimeter uh, clamp that's holding on a, a band that goes over to the throttle body. And if you come all the way over behind here with the camera, you should be able to see that right there. And we're going to loosen this guy as well. And then with all those guys loosened up, come back here to the front. This guy's on here really, really hard. There he goes. All right. And then we should be able to pull this hose off. Well, didn't want to pull it off that end. Get this guy off out of the way there. Yeah, see, that's the trouble with this stuff, this old plastic. This guy actually broke off on me. So I'm going to have to go pull me another one of these housings uh, from a salvage yard. So be careful when you get this guy off because these are really old pieces and they're really prone to damage like that. But let's just keep on going. So now you can get a better view of the alternator here. There's two bolts here on top, two 13 millimeter bolts. And of course, we got the pulley over there. So in order to get further access, we're going to have to pull off this upper radiator hose. And the other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to slide this, uh, this accessory bracket here over. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Take off um, these additional bolts here. So those spring clamps were eight millimeters. These look a little bit bigger, like a 10. Let me go get a different socket. I'll pick this guy off so we can move that over and then we'll pull the upper hose. So let me go get another socket and we'll come back. All right, guys. Yep, it was a 10 millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Well, get that later. And now we can move this guy out of the way as we need him. Just be real gentle with him. Remember that you got a connection up here to one of the fuel injectors, so you don't want to pull it too far, but we're trying to get it just so we have enough room after we get this hose out of the way that we can lift this alternator and, and, and bring it out. So the next thing I'm going to do, the, it's up to you. You're going to get some wet on the ground one way or the other. You can either take off the bottom bolt to this guy and then take off the hose, and there's going to be some coolant that leaks. So have a, have a catch pan out, down under there. And then later on, it's going to be kind of wet down there when you go put the bolt back in on the new one. Or, or you can, you know, do, do, do it the backwards way. I'm actually just going to take this off now, and I'll go ahead and, and, and get it off later. So I don't, I don't mind that problem. 
So let me go ahead and remove that clamp off the top. Or at least loosen it up rather. On something like this, I'm just gonna twist it with my hand first to see, there we go. So we're gonna be able to move it. I'm gonna go ahead and get the pan underneath because we're gonna lose a little bit of coolant no matter what we do. Something like this. And then just gonna go ahead and pull this guy off. It's not a lot, it's just a little bit. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to get something where you can kind of secure this hose to the hood prop. And I'll do that later in just a minute. But now we've got that out of the way. At this point, I'm just going to wait for a little bit to let all that drip down. And then I'm going to go ahead and loosen up um, these three bolts, the one on the bottom, the two on top. Before I actually remove them, though, I'm going to take the belt off the pulley. So uh, we'll wait for this to drip out all the way, and then we'll come back. All right, guys, uh, the main reason we put the vehicle up on ramps is so that we could get in here and get at this 13 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the alternator. I've already started loosening this. I can't get my electric tool in here, so I'm going to have to do it the hard way with this manual ratchet. And I'm not going to film the whole thing, but you know, you're going to want to remove this. And then after this bolt's out, we'll then work on getting the serpentine belt removed from the pulley so we can pull the two bolts off the top and then start to pull it out pull the alternator out so we can disconnect the electrical connection. So we'll come back after this. All right, guys, we're back on top. Uh, let me show you what we did off camera before we picked it up underneath. I've put some uh, rags in these ports so that we don't get any dirt or debris in there when we start bringing this guy up. I've also done the same thing over here. Uh, it's a good idea. And I've also bungeed this guy over to the hood prop so he's out of our way. Uh, we took this bolt off earlier and we're, I all went, went ahead and I loosened um, these two bolts that help secure this AC line because that'll help give us some more slack because we can pull this pipe out of the way. It'll give us some more slack for moving this guy out of the way as much as we need him. And we pulled that 13 millimeter bolt off the bottom of the alternator and I've already loosened these two. So the next thing we got to do is we got to get this belt off. Now normally I would probably say try to get it from the top. You can take any kind of a 3 8 inch tool and the tensioner is right here and you can get that inserted in there however this particular tool I cannot find my longer one and I can't get a pipe in here with these AC lines and everything else in here so what I'm going to have to do in order to get access to this tensioner I mean this would be the easier way to come in up here and, and be able to hook this down there then lift it right up pull it back up in an arc up to about here then you should be able to get your finger under here and get this belt off I'm going to have to take this side access cover behind the wheel well off. If you come down over here, there's a plastic cover here. You can see there's a screw here on this inside area. There's a screw over here. You know, it's right, in the, right inside the wheel well here. And that'll give us an ability to come in with this smaller ratchet wrench. And we can still have the tire on and all that. We'll just have to come in from underneath. And that's going to probably be, I think I just checked it here, it's a seven millimeter uh, head set of screws. So I'll pull those off and we'll go up underneath. I'll show you how to reduce, reduce or excuse me, uh, release the tension on the belt so we can take the last two bolts off the alternator and pull it out and disconnect it. All right, guys, so this panel here, there's a, there's a bolt that comes off the top. And I'll show you guys when I put it back on that I went ahead and took it off just to get some access. Take the bolt at the top and then there's, there's three along the side and then there's three at the bottom and then you can just pull it down. You don't have to remove it because there's some wiring harnesses that are clipped to it. And now you can see up here is our belt tensioner. And from this angle, it's going to be easier, although I'm not going to be able to film the whole thing, it's going to be easier to come in here and get a tool snapped in there where we can now pull down on this thing and we'll be able to lift it up and take the tension off so that we can get the belt off. So you're going to have to have a helper, which is what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to have somebody remove the belt while I pull this from below. But let's go ahead and get the belt off and we'll come back. All right, guys, we, we, we've got the pulley off, or excuse me, we've got the belt off the pulley. Now all, the, all we have left are these two 13s to remove. And like I said in the previous clip, I already loosened them. Let 
can see that one out. The only thing holding it on now is this guy here. All right, now at this point, getting that belt off is the first hard thing. The second hard thing is actually extracting this guy because there's just not a lot of room at all. I think what I might want to do is go ahead and disconnect this sensor harness. It's going to be something to reach under there like a small screwdriver. Help get the clip to let go. Got that guy off. And then the next one we want to do is the the main charging wire. It's right here, we just want to pull the boot back. And this is again where you want to make sure you have disconnected that negative wire from your battery. this guy back should be able to get that nut off looks like it might be a 13 hopefully let's see yes man that's on there super tight Let me get a little uh, small mallet to knock this loose. All right, guys, what I end up doing is I just end up putting a little pipe on here and then getting a piece of wood and wedge it in here so we could give it a, a turn and get this guy loose. So with that torque broke, we should be able to get this nut off the rest of the way by hand. And then we can remove that cable. Now this is uh, been on here for a really long time, so it's super corroded underneath, which is probably contributing to why it's not charging well anymore. So this looks like it's got a little ways to go, so we'll cut while I get this off. We'll come back when I get it all the way. All right, we got this prevailing torque nut off so that we can remove this. Take our main lead wire, kind of tuck it over here for a moment. Make sure there's no washer on here. Doesn't look like it. Now we just have to get this guy fished out. All right, let's take a look and compare it to our new one. So we're going to replace this with an AC Delco um, 334-1468A or GM 8886-4453. With this particular model year vehicle, you can only get remanufactured parts now, and that's fine. And what we want to do before we reinstall is mostly just first compare that we've got the same size pulley. Because these guys are supposed to cover a number of different years. Looks good. And then you want to make sure that you're seeing the, uh, the same so type of mounting with the frame, right? So we've got these two on top, and we've got this one on the bottom. So yep, it looks the same, cosmetically anyway. So let's go ahead and uh, get it installed. It's going to have a, a new nut here, so you will, we'll use the one that it comes with rather than the old one. And then we've just got a little uh, thing about GM testing it. You know, this one here, I believe, is it gotten at least 
uh, nine years out of it, if not ten. So these port, these GM ports, I you know I tend to have good experience with them, so that's why I keep going with them. So let me get a pair of cutters to cut this little tie, and then we'll get started reinstalling it. All right, orient it back in with the the two bolts at the top, and we're going to go ahead and take this screw and washer off for the battery terminal, charging terminal, before we drop it in here. All right, now that we got it in here, we'll put it back in the orientation we had the other one, and we'll reattach this guy. So, here he is. Pull the boot back again. Likes to creep up on you. Well, you guys probably can't see too well. How about now? All right, and then I'm going to put this nut on there. I'm just going to finger tighten them for a moment so I can get this thing oriented in a better position. There we go. All right, so we looked in the, uh, the uh, rebuild manual and we see that they recommend this battery post nut be between 50 and 70 inch pounds. So we're gonna go right in the middle and do 60, 60 inch pounds on this guy. And what you wanna do is you wanna keep it kind of perpendicular. So remember this guy likes to twist around but the way we found it, it was in this kind of position like this with the wire in the back here where my finger is, right? So we want to kind of hold it in that position while we torque it down. And again, this is a 13 millimeter. At least the original one was. If you have something aftermarket, it might be different. But this AC Delco one, it's going to be 13 millimeters. All right, we got that torque down and we got it back in the right position. And then we're going to pull the boot over completely to insulate this. Make sure it's completely, because this is going to keep you from having any kind of a short. All right, now we're going to turn it this way and we're going to find our sense harness it dropped down here. And we're going to get this guy back in. All right, that's actually what provides the signal for the computer to know whether to throw that battery light on on the dash cluster. All right, so now let's put our two 13 millimeter bolts back in. Start with this one, and then we'll get this guy going here. Just kind of get them going by hand first so that you know they've threaded properly. And then you can feed them in the rest of the way, but I wouldn't tighten them all the way because we still have the one in the bottom put in. enough so we know this is safe and secure before we go up underneath it. All right. We just want a little bit of leeway in case we have to have some flexibility getting the hole aligned on the bottom. So let's go in and put the one on the bottom back in. All right, so then we just feed the lower 13 in here and just kind of wiggle it around until you feel like it has gotten to the, t the threads. This is part of why we didn't want to tighten everything down all the way up on top.
might be a little too much slack on it. There it goes. All right, so now we're going to thread this in, and then we'll come back and torque them up. All right, let's torque this guy up with 13, a 13 millimeter socket. These end up being 15 foot pounds. So we'll start with these two here on top and then we'll go underneath and torque the one on the bottom. While we're up here, we'll go ahead and remove our two. And again, make sure you count how many of these things you do so you don't leave one in here and it gets stuck in the engine. Then we'll unravel our bungee cord And we'll go ahead and reconnect our coolant line. And we will go ahead and reposition the clamp that secures it. There we go. All right. And then what we'll do um, when we're all done, of course, is uh, we'll start the engine, drive it around, and then we'll recheck the coolant after a test drive and top it back up to the cool mark after it cools down. All right, and then also while we're in here, let's go ahead and move our bracket for our air conditioning line and put these 10 millimeter bolts back in. There's one here, and there's one here, and. Let me show you something just so you don't get them confused. These two here are the short ones. And this guy here is the long one that goes over here. Now, I'm not going to tighten these in all the way yet, just in case we find ourselves having to move anything around. But I did want to just at least get everything roughly back where it was to begin with. All right, so now what we're going to do, we'll go underneath and we'll torque the third final mounting bolt to uh, 15 foot-pounds on the bottom of the alternator. And then we're going to go repeat our belt tensioner routine to get the belt back on to the new alternator's pulley. So we'll come back after we do that. All right, guys, I'm just going to show you with this access cover and the wheel well put back on, right? So you've got this one bolt here, two, three up on the side. Down the very top, there's one holding that little tab bracket up on top, and these are all seven millimeter bolts. And then coming back down, there's another two on the bottom, one here and one here. You remove those bolts, and then this little push clip that I'm about to reinstall back in the back here. So you got one of these little friction push clips that goes right there. So between that friction push clip and those seven millimeter bolts, if you remove all those, that's how I took this thing uh, down. There's a little um, indentation here you see up on top that you'll need to clear past this line and then let it sit right underneath the axle and that'll give you enough access to get to that serpentine belt tensioner that uh, we were showing. You just, there's just no way to get in here and, and film that actually happening but hopefully between this earlier view in the video and this view you, you guys get what we were talking about when we talk about getting an, a 3 8 inch a wrench up into that guy so that you can pull him down so you can release the tension to both remove the belt from the alternator pulley and then at the end to reinstall it. All right, so let's uh, continue up and finish torquing our bolts and finish the reassembly. All right, guys, and I forgot to mention the torque on those uh, fender liner bolts underneath that we did for the access to the belt tensioner, and they were 18 inch pounds, 18 inch pounds. These 10 millimeter bolts I'm doing now, they are 89 inch pounds. Once we do these, we'll be ready to put the air intake assembly back on. And again, all three of these are 89 inch pounds. Okay, so we've got our belt on, we've got our dipstick bracket re retorque down, we've got our alternator torque down, two on the top, one on the bottom. Got our sensor wire connected. We got our charge wire connected. That one is torqued. The, the charge wire is torqued to 60 inch pounds. And then we've got 
our um, air conditioning bracket bolts also to 89 inch pounds. And then we've got our, our bolts on the inside fender well that we use to access the belt tensioner to 18 inch pounds. And remove this, which is our last plug. And the only thing we got left to do is put the box on and reconnect the negative battery cable. So I'm not necessarily gonna film that. We'll get this box back on and then we'll come back and wrap it up. All right, guys, we got our cover back on. Make sure you tighten up this eight millimeter uh, clamp here. And remember to go in through here and tighten up the one where the, this guy connects to the throttle body. Remember to reconnect your sensor. Remember to reconnect your, your vacuum line here. And then after you get those guys connected, remember to reinstall the um, cover here with the push pin. It covers up the throttle connections. And then you're all set. Remember you reconnect your negative battery cable. And then remember to um, you know, reclamp your air hose to the engine over there. And that's it. We should be in good shape. We're going to back it off the ramps, drive it around, and make sure we don't get that red battery light on the dash anymore. If you've got any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.